Hi everyone, I'm Denisha Devnarayan and you're watching the Full Quota podcast on One World Sports Radio. Okay, we're back again. Promos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got promos now. We're but legit. for the final 10 minutes of the show, guys, I just wanted to have a conversation about the team updates. Um, obviously, I'm going to read through them and then we'll just go to discuss what's going on. So, um, one of the things the team is leaving tomorrow morning uh, to go to Sri Lanka. That's Wednesday morning. Um, a couple of uh, changes to the team. Junior Dala is out of the ODI side. Luto Sipamla comes in um, into that side. Uh, Charles Langefeld also is out. Um, they mentioned that both Dala and Langefeld were out for COVID-related reasons. And uh, the Titans coach, uh, well, Northern's coach, Mandla Mashimbe, comes into the side. He also joined the team in that test tour when Enoch was in South Africa. We also have Justin Sammons coming in as a batting consultant. He is the current coach of the Northwest Dragons. So that's a good one for him. He was a former Lions batting coach. And then what happened? So obviously Timber spoke at the press conference. They asked him about how the team was doing with the SJN hearings. He said uh, Mark Bacher took them into his confidence and he spoke about what he wrote in the affidavit. What then happened, obviously, the affidavit was released yesterday, which, as Tim says, bad timing. Um, but then, after reading the affidavit for me, Enoch Conquer's resignation hits the headlines. And so, I actually want to hear what you guys think about what happened yesterday. Um, and I want to start with, with, with you, Tim, uh, because I was like, it's probably the worst day this men's team would have had going to the World Cup. Uh, I... Yeah, it's it really floored me. I, I was expecting a heck, a heck of a lot more from Mark Boucher um, when he knew that he was being accused of having these uh, allegations against him um, during the SGM. I was expecting him to have this press release, but I was expecting him to put that alongside some kind of interview with um, tough advice or for Munda to give his side of the story along with his written piece. He, he he's written this piece and he's just sort of left it there. Um, I also have a problem. I don't necessarily have a problem with a majority of what he said, but but I, it does, I, I do feel uncomfortable when he says things like perceived. Oh yeah, that. Oh. A, a, that perceived. Uh, um, yeah. harm uh, uh, or perceived hurt that he that he created with, when he said those things. Well, nothing about that, that yeah, nothing about that is perceived. I'm afraid it's it hurts it hurts right at the center. Um, he should have just said, "I'm sorry for what I said all those years ago. It was wrong. It was unacceptable." And I apologize un unreservedly. Uh, his his apology just feels feels it feels hollow. It feels hollow, and it feels doubly mm. hollow when you have the assistant coach, who's supposed to be the man taking over, resigning uh, or Open wanting to or, or wanting to resign um, because he feels not uh, taken seriously. And, and not a part of, of the management side. Um, it's it's really bad. When we've gone through what we've gone through in the SGM, the things that have been coming out there, whatever, whatever way you look at it, it's a bad look all the way through. Yeah, so this is what Mark says um, in, I think, point 13 of his affidavit. I apologize unreservedly for any offensive conduct, real or perceived, that has been attributed to me. Yeah, at the real and then real... he says, and then he says, we the team, coaching staff, selectors, and CSA during the period in question should have been more sensitive and created an environment where all members of the team could raise and talk about these issues without allowing them to fester as as they clearly have. Um, Tips, you've been a supporter of Mark Barcher through this. You wanted to hear his side of the story. What do you think? Uh, before I give. My, my thoughts um quite honestly um i think what more could could mark boucher have done um i guess 
if we're talking about like the real or perceived, then we're going into the semantics of what he said when at the end of the day, the man's sorry, you know, um, I, I, like, I don't, what I didn't want to see was a tone deaf, like, like thing where he just sort of brushed off all these serious discussions. But when I was reading it, I don't know, I got the impression that he'd been reflecting on these types of things. He, he's apologizing for all those, um, all the hurt that he caused and, and with the whole real or perceived, I'm, I'm sure he understands that, like he caused real harm and then some places where he didn't cause or at least didn't intend to cause harm like without even knowing he caused harm you know he caused harm so yeah i, I mean if we're going to nitpick every single word that he says then we could spend days and days on this but like what i want as a south african supporter as a south african citizen is for us to sort of like move forward you know um as much as the, the, the culture was toxic. Um, it was obviously toxic. Um, I mean, throughout the, the entire, not just the, the playing side, but the admin side, we just mm -hmm. know that like South African cricket, it just feels like a very toxic environment. And I mean, like being an agent of that toxicity is something that you do unconsciously, in, in my opinion, especially like as, 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 a, as a white individual. I mean, I grew up in Centurion where I also like had toxic behavior as, as a black person in, in a white space, you know, and, and that just shows how like an environment can truly indoctrinate individuals, you know, uh, people that don't want to cause harm can still cause harm. And to me, um, like I, I want us to just move forward and when I read it, I was like, shoo, okay, this man seems to understand that he caused harm. He's sorry about it. He even said that, like, all the people that he caused harm to, all the people that, like, um, I brought up his name, grievances, he would love to, he, he'd like to speak on the, to them um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And honestly, like, what, what more can Mark Boucher do? You know, must, must he just get fired, you know? But yeah, <laughs> like, like, is that is that going to make people happy? But then, like, how how wh wh what 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 is he supposed to do? Um, yeah. But then, just right after that, Enoch Unque just oh man, I, I don't know. It feels like we take steps forward, then we take steps back. Things seem one way, then they seem another way, and the other things here and there. Uh, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to feel. I'm I'm tired. I'm I'm just tired. Like very very. Okay tired so i think for me after reading it I, I i read that part real or perceived because to me it kind of when people apologize it, it kind of came with conditions you know if you perceive it if you think it's real and so that's one of the things where i was like okay i was a little bit triggered by it but i was like he's apologizing nonetheless so i was okay with that i was comfortable with what he's written but then he speaks about the culture now and that's where my where that's where I was like, okay, I understand they speak about respect, they spoke about empathy, they spoke about all these things that they did in the culture camp last year. But then, after 30 minutes after reading this thing and saying, and I spoke with the group that we have, to be like, okay, he's apologized, that's fine, I don't buy the whole I was naive, um, because I think so certain parts of his affidavit, he was like, even in that paragraph 13, he says we instead of I. He never, it kind of feels like he wasn't owning it, but I was like, it's fine because he wants to be a part of CSA and, and, and hiding behind it, which I'm okay with. It's fine. Um, I like, like we wanted an apology. A lot of people wanted an apology and Paul Adams and Ashley Prince and all the guys, if they read this, they need to tell us if they are comfortable with this. At this point in time, I'm slightly not comfortable with it, but I was like, you know what? Give him the benefit of the doubt. He's apologized. However, when he says and he writes in here that the team culture has changed and that everything has changed, but 30 minutes after me reading this yesterday, he then comes out and says, Enoch comes out and says he's resigning for a toxic work environment. He's resigning, well, not a toxic, but a contaminated work environment. He's resigning because some senior players were allowed a lot of, um, they contravened certain things on the tour to the West Indies and they weren't called back in. It makes me think that this culture is still... As you said, there's a culture that you kind of, you take and you're indoctrinated into as the protest. If that culture is not, go is not gone, we may need to find a way to get somebody who's going to come in 
and clean that culture out. If if the guy is Mark Voucher, that's fine. I'm okay with that. If it's somebody else, that's that, that I'm okay with that. But whoever is um, making Enoch feel this way, because I have, as a black man in corporate, I've felt the same way Enoch has felt, like a Cones guy. You're qualified. You've got all the qualifications in the world, but somebody thinks that you don't have any agency or, or any qualifications, so you just do the basic, small, mundane things. And it gets tiring on your person, on your mental health, and I hope Enoch's mental health is 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 is, is being taken care of because the reason why he wouldn't want to resign now, it's the worst time to resign for the team, but he kind of felt like this was the last straw. And to a certain extent, I kind of feel that, and I kind of want the person who is in charge of the culture, who created this culture for the Proteas in this new system, whoever that person is needs to be moved out. If that's Mark Boucher, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm even at a point when I was asked today this morning on another radio station whether he should be fired and we what, what should happen. I was like, look, if he gets fired, that's fine. But if you want to move him away, I'm okay with getting a new coach in right now because things are things are crazy, but they must ask the players first because they're the ones that are most affected by this. And I'd like to hear, because Timber said everything was fine. Three hours later, Enoch says it's not fine. Mark says it's fine. Timber says it's okay. What's the real truth? And I hope that the players are not being silent for being victimized, mm. which is what Enoch wrote. He said there's some players who are who don't want to speak up because they, they feel they fear for being victimized. So I really do hope CSA can solve this. And if it means letting him go before the World Cup, fine, we can write this off. But I want a proper inclusive culture. As Mark wrote in the paper, it must be an mm. inclusive culture. It's just that it wasn't inclusive enough for Enoch. And that's just sad because it, it just throws a lot of water on what Mark said. And we could have moved forward with this apology, but we're not. So with that said, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to like, like, um, like put any doubt onto Enoch Mkwe's character um, uh, or Mark Boucher's character. But could it, could it be a situation where we just have two, like we have Enoch Mkwe in the assistant coach role. And he's just overqualified for that role. And I'm not saying that like it's his ego that's making him move out. He says it's a toxic environment, but what if it it's like like it, what if it's politics? What if um, things aren't running the way he wants them to run? He had a clear vision. Um, he wanted the role uh, because I mean he was in the role for a while, and then Mark Boucher stepped in, and now things aren't going his way. And he's like, look, um, if things aren't gonna if, I, if things aren't going to happen my way, why am I wasting my time as a coach here when I could go build something else somewhere else? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure. So, so my question is, is sort of, uh, is, it, is, it, is it a race thing? Are we sure that it's a race thing? Or is it like a culture thing? Um, like nothing seems well, clear to me, but maybe yeah. I didn't do enough reading, but it doesn't seem clear to me. It, 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 it definitely isn't. We, we, one thing we need to do is we need to hear from Enoch one way or the other. We need to hear from him rather, for, rather than from quotes on an on a, on a online publication. Mm. That's, that's, that's the important part. Um, I have seen suggestions that, it's, that it is leaning towards he wants a different role, not necessarily that he, he, he sees that there's a, a racial tension but he wants a different okay. role. He wants to take a back seat, if you like. I don't, again, this is speculation. Mm. This is not, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm not saying this is 100%, but I have seen that that has been suggested that he would like a, um, a high performance like type, something like that, high performance center job, something something that oversees everything. But so that comes out but, to, but but that comes down to what an assistant coach does mm. and whether yeah. Enoch was being fully utilized as an assistant. We understand he's more qualified than Mark. We get that. We understand that. But the big issue was when he said, I'm being used as a Cones guy, my first question was, are assistant coaches, what, what are their roles? And, 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 and to a certain extent, Enoch's been an assistant coach before under Jeff. He understands the role. So was it different? To what he got at the lines and that's when he realized well, actually i need to leave here because even though you're promising me this job in 2023 
this guy doesn't see me and he doesn't want to work with me the same way I worked with Jeff because 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 the question is what, what and, and we'd have to ask the cricket community as an assistant role what's the role is he to be the Kearns guy which is kind of weird because I think they all have to like work together with it or are his ideas being pushed aside because the way Mark elaborated to and Enoch elaborated to the way they're supposed to work I think in December in an, in an interview he spoke about how they work together as a management team with him and Mark together coming up with ideas and, and the bowling coach and everybody else. And has there come a point where now Mark is vetoing or Mark has changed the way in which Enoch is, 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 is being, is being related to because in December, he sounded fine, sounded okay. Explained it quite yeah. well that they work together and they use their, their skill sets. Well. So there's, there's been, there's definitely been a change. I think the change was in the West Indies and Ireland. I just don't know what actually, well, we don't know what actually transpired there. But he also spoke, and that's why I'm saying that maybe there's a culture issue and it might also be a, I don't know if it's a race issue, but if it's a culture issue, it's still problematic because you need an inclusive culture regardless. Um, okay. if, if, who the, if the senior players are being, uh, were, were contravening whatever it is, bubble codes, whatever it is, and they were still being, uh, going unpunished, that speaks to the big five, whatever they were calling it, the thing that Mark denied um, culture creeping back into South African cricket where senior players do stupid things, they break the law, break whatever it is, and then they still are being protected. That can't happen in 2021. And that, for me, says a lot more rather than him saying contaminated. That line, when he said senior players, I was like, okay, it's, it might just be a culture thing. It might not just be a, I'm looking for something better. He may be yeah. looking for something better, but I I wouldn't. It'd be interesting to know because if if Enoch was looking for something better, does he have something already? If he doesn't, then is he? What is he going to wait? Because all the coaching jobs in South Africa are taken, even the high yeah. performance job is taken. So like, what is he looking for? And he 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 sent out the letter with the intention to resign. So he was walking away. It was CSA who brought him back. So there's a lot to unpack and. I hope that we get some answers by tomorrow when they go, um, because I think it's quite interesting to see what this thing is. It's just it's it's just not a a good situation to be in where the guy was promised the job in 2023, all of a sudden says I don't want to wait anymore. Because remember the reason why he didn't get the job was that he didn't have international experience. He's choosing to forego that international experience and sit on the sidelines because it's not working well. And we've all had bad work situations, but mm. was it bad enough for him to leave now? Uh, when what he if, was two what, years away? what if what if he realized that this wasn't like what he wanted? I mean, um, look, I, I don't know what it is, but I mean, mm. what if he realized that this being the South African coach is not all it's cracked up to be? Um, it, it seems like it's a lot of work because you, you're going to have to deal with a lot of. It's not just cricket in South Africa; it's mm. cricket. It's race. It's and that's just the nature of our country. We can't run away from it. That's how it's going to be. You're going to have to deal with it. And what if he was like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to deal with this. What if he didn't want to deal with superstar egos? You know, like. Um, but then he would have the said problem. that. He wouldn't have yeah, said yeah. it's a bad yeah, working true. environment. He wouldn't want to be leave the guys he was working with in a bad spot. And I think that's where the 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 crux of the matter is if he said i found a new opportunity fine by all means if he said story, yeah. this isn't yeah. for me and i don't want this then maybe but he went and said contaminated environment that word is just it, it's loaded it's it's because because well, we, we've we've seen people well, resign well, before and they don't want to badmouth the employers and then you like i found mm. another opportunity we've true, we've, true, true. we've we've we as a national side we've been down the road before um ray jennings Ray Jennings, when he arrived at the purchase side, he said that the the way the senior players was behaving was absolutely disgraceful. He said they were just allowed to do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. He said the culture within that side, when he went in, was mm. abhorrent. Um, and he and he, much to Graham Smith, won't like like him like to admit this, but he changed it. He changed mm. that. He made sure that those boys knew that this is either you yeah. back up your ideas or you're out of here. And, he, you know, his short reign 
you know, maybe that's what they need. Maybe they, two or three of them do need that. And just, listen, you, you, you're good, but I'm not going to have, have you, you know, missing training and it, doing this and doing that. But the other thing, it also speaks to the type of leader Mark Boucher is and the type of, 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 of ship he's running. And the one last thing I think for, for me was, I just hope that the the senior players are in some sort of like a, are, 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 are diverse and it's not like one race because that would make life even worse for, 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 for the, for the management team. But um, yeah. Um, thank you very much, gents. Um, I'll probably actually cut this out and put it as a separate episode. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining gents. Thank you to Dan. Thank you to everyone. Um, please remember like and subscribe to the podcast um and yeah we'll chat on this a little bit more we'll be back on thursday um with uh more um special, special guest yeah we've got Ooh. a special guest <laughs> uh, another domestic guest um so please do join us then outside of that have a good day good night and salut